Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, I want to talk to you guys about how much time it is exactly that I spend out here in the orchard and in the garden beds. You know, I think a lot of new guys, a lot of new people, they ask me or they just propose that. They're always thinking about this question. How much time do I have to spend outside growing food? You know, how much time does it actually take? And if you're growing a lot of things in high density like I am, I think it's a lot more work. It's a lot more to maintain. But I'm going to give you guys a lot of different tips right now just to give you ideas of how to save yourself time. Also, I want to talk about really what it is and how much work I actually do put in. So let's get into that right now. I'm going to actually have a, quite a few tips for you guys towards the end of this. But I would argue that the most work that you're going to have to put in is at the beginning of the season and at the end of the season. I think really planting everything out in the spring, getting all your vegetables in, right, in terms of your garden, getting everything planted, whether it's a fruit tree, whether it's a flowering plant, I think planting takes up a lot of time. Um, it can be a lot of work, depending on how difficult and how much work you wanna put into the planting hole. You know, I try to go with the approach to just do everything as simply as possible. I don't try to overcomplicate things, really make things more difficult than they need to be. If we start off with the right foot, we're going to have a successful garden. We're going to have a successful orchard. So I think that's obviously key is having, you know, the right key principles to begin with. Like as an example, having the right soil. You know, having a soil that's one, nutritious, you can direct seed into very well, that's gonna hold the right amount of water, that's gonna hold water in general, right? So that we don't have to be watering this every so often, we don't have to be fertilizing this very often, and also weeds, right? With any garden application here, whether it's the orchard, whether it's, whether it's the garden, I have two thoughts in mind, water and weeds. And for me in my climate, anything in the ground because I have such a heavy clay here, I don't have to worry about water. So I don't water a single thing out here. And that's a lot of time just completely gone. Now, what I would have to water would be these container figs or these container fruit trees like my jujubes, my che, my mulberry, you know, all the citrus trees. This is really stuff if it's in a container, you're gonna have to water it no matter where you live. Well, not really, but definitely you're gonna have to water it every so often and just getting up your irrigation lines is gonna go a long way. It's on a timer. It does it for me automatically every day. I don't have to worry about this. I don't have to pay attention to this. This thing is automatic. So that's like 35, 50 minutes of my day every day that if I didn't have this, I would have to come out here and water every single potted plant. And that would, again, that would take a lot of time away from the things that are really more important to me. So if you can automate water or even automate food as an example for these plants and keep the, the weeds down, I think your work is going to be a lot less. Now, we talked about the spring, but also in the fall, I think there is a lot of work and you can kind of put off a lot of these fall duties here. You don't have to be pruning these trees right away. In fact, it's probably recommended, you know, you don't have to really take care of the whole garden at once. What you really want to do is focus on getting specific things ready for the winter time. It's also a great time in the winter and in the fall to really prepare our garden beds, get our garden beds in order get our orchard in order and do all the things that I think can be put off. But I would say for me, at least that's what I like to do is I like to put a lot of work in, in the spring and then in the fall. Now what happens here in this particular situation of mine is that we can really get a lot of work coming in depending on what we're harvesting. So I think besides water feeding these trees, feeding these plants, um, you know, weeding. I think weeding is a lot of work, but one of the biggest time sucks is harvesting. And here is my peaches right now that actually are very close to be able to be harvested. I've already harvested plenty of them. In fact, I could probably take off quite a bit of these, but I'm waiting 
for some of them to get softer, larger, the right color. So I'm not gonna rush this too much, but the point is is that I wanna make sure, or the point is is that these fruits are larger. So if I come in here and I harvest this peach and I just twist this thing off, that's a peach, right? That's a large fruit. So for me, this is a really easy harvest and it only comes at one time of the year. You know, this isn't something that I have to come back to again. I'm here middle of July through probably the middle of August and then that's it. I'm done. And then I move on to the next thing, you know? So it's not like everything's being harvested at once. However, there are definite bursts of harvest like let's say in the beginning of you know, in the beginning of June, I have lots of snap peas, I have lots of strawberries. Then we start getting things like cherries, we start getting things like uh, even blueberries, gumi, you know, currants, all kinds of weird berries that could be popping up in this area here that, to be honest with you, are really small. So when you have a harvest that's not just, you know, all at once, but also the things you're harvesting are small, it's a lot more work. Blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, all these things are a lot of work to come in here and by hand harvest all these things. So there's definitely certain tricks with all that. You can maybe harvest more at once, but we grow fruit to grow fruit for the flavor, right? We grow fruit to pick it at the optimal ripeness, the optimal quality. So in order to do that, you have to be out here every day. And if you're not gonna be out here every day, at least be out here every other or every three days because what's going to happen with some of these fruits is that if you don't pick them something else is going to get to it something else is going to get to it and it's not just a critter a bird or you know a squirrel it could be a pest and that pest could then proliferate and actually make things way worse you could also have disease so as an example my strawberries because they're so soft my mar de bois strawberries in the front here they will mummify if I don't pick them. If it rain comes in, it could ferment the fruit. And then if we get fermented fruits, we have something called spotted wing drosophilia that comes in, which is a fruit fly, which then attacks and ferments other fruits. So we have a disease in the mummified berries, but then also an insect could come in and now be attracted to my yard and set up some sort of ecosystem and proliferate and complete a life cycle in my yard. So it's really important that if we are gonna be planting stuff, whatever it is, we need to be on top of it. We need to be able to have enough work ethic, enough time, enough energy to put into this stuff to be able to take care of it. Because if we don't, we're gonna get overrun. We're gonna have a really big issue here and it's gonna make things a lot worse. You're gonna create more work this way. Uh, what we need to do is start off on the right foot, as I've mentioned, with the soil, the weeds, the watering. All of this is the key to having less work. And of course, not letting yourself get overrun by too many things, you know? As an example, I'm gonna have very soon about, you know, I don't know how many pounds of potatoes, but a crap ton of potatoes. And at the same time, I'm gonna have a crap ton of onions. But luckily, these onions, these potatoes, I'm only here once. You know, I come in here, I put a potato on the ground, I space them out the right way, I cover them with straw, they grow, they do their thing. I don't do a thing to them. They take care of themselves and then they die you can see they're starting to look really bad they're starting to yellow this is the time now coming up once these things have completely died over completely yellowed off maybe even some of it's brown is that i can come in here and harvest all this but if you think about how much work actually went into this it was very very little this took me maybe so far at the planting date maybe 15 30 minutes of work and the amount of potatoes i'm going to get is kind of insane to think about. I mean, there's gonna be more time in terms of harvesting, probably double the amount of time. So let's say I spent a whole hour just planting out all these potatoes here. Let's say I get uh, 50 pounds of potatoes out of this area. I think that's, mm, 
I think that's maybe reasonable. Maybe I'm a little off at that, but you know, there's a, a number of potato plants, 50 pounds. I spent an hour of my time. I got 50, 50 pounds of food. So it depends on really what it is, you know, plant things that are going to give you more freedom to do what you want. You know, I think perennials are really that thing. Certainly annuals can be like the potato, but these fruit trees, as an example, they kind of care for themselves and they don't really need attention all the time. What you should do is come out here and inspect the fruits and be like, oh, here's an apple. You know, this looks ripe, is it? And, you know, give it a little tug and see if it comes off. You know, is the color right? How's it looking? How's the tree looking as well? You know, do the trees show any disease? Are they showing any uh, leaf problems? Is there any crazy pests that I have to worry about? You know, look at this as an example. Here is on my grapevines, black rot once again this year. So yeah, I have some pretty nice grapes here, but uh, for the most part, if I'm not on top of these grapevines, let's say it rains too much, this disease here is probably going to spread. I'm probably not going to get many grapes. And just by me dropping this on the ground is now continuing that disease from coming back year after year. So it can be a bit difficult and daunting. I don't, I don't want to discourage anybody out there because I really don't think I spend a whole lot of time. I think I spend, you know, on the weekends as an example, which it is right now, I'm usually out here every day, uh, two days on the weekend, I should say. So Saturday and Sunday, at least I try to. Maybe I'll skip a weekend or maybe I'll do a light weekend. But I enjoy this. I enjoy being out here all day on the weekends for both Saturday and Sunday. I get a lot of sun, I get a lot of energy. It's a nice workout. I feel happy. You know, there's so much uh, benefit to being out here that I don't really mind it. Um, but I will be out here for probably most of the weekend at different times of the year. You know, in the beginning of the year, again, a lot of time. In the fall, a lot of time. Probably sometime around now when we're getting a lot of different fruits that are coming in because it's now becoming August, even though we are still in mid-July. Now I'm getting things like tomatoes, you know, that weren't here before. Very soon I'm getting things like zucchini and eggplants and peppers, maybe even some melons in the future. You know, we finally have some stone fruits in the peaches that are ripening. Um, you know, in the future, in future years, I would have things like apples, the summer apples that are coming in more in frequency. I would also have the grapes that are coming in sometime in August. So a lot of things around this time of the year can get a bit hectic, I'm not gonna lie. And then you have your whole little subset of fall fruits. You know, things like your jujubes, your persimmons, your pomegranates, and your figs. So for me, I don't really think I spend a whole lot of time out here if I, if I really needed to spend 15 minutes out here every day, I think I could do it. And I don't think it would be really recommended <laughs> based off of just the sheer number of stuff. So like if I, if I spend a good amount of time out here, now that everything's been planted, now everything's in its spot, I spend a lot of time out here in the spring, I spend a lot of time out here in the fall. All, every other time of the year, let's just say I could spend maybe 15 minutes out here. I think I could do that every day. And that's just simply to come out here and harvest. And what I would do at this point, if I, and I think I am gonna do this, is that I have too many, too many fruiting plants in terms of really small berries, like my strawberries as an example. These are a June bearing type here, which is nice because not much fruit ripens in June. But my Mara de Bois strawberry in the front of the house is so good, it produces all year I think this is just adding more fuel to the fire of just things I have to do. So maybe I'll keep the June bears and get rid of the Mar de Bois. I don't know, but the point is it's a lot to keep up with. It's a lot to keep up with the strawberry plants and the strawberry plants in the front. I think ideally what I'll probably do is, you know, I'm going to probably get rid of 
maybe half of the strawberry plants in the front. And every year I'll do that so that, yeah, I can have these June bears have a nice little harvest in June, have a nice little harvest from the Mar de Bois strawberries in June. And then I get like a three week break and then the Mar de Bois strawberries continue all the way to frost. So I'm picking strawberries for like 90% of the growing season. And that's just a lot to keep up with. They're just really small fruits. They're great. They're very tasty. I, I can't imagine never not having them. But then I have things in the late summer, sometime in like August, you can already see the flowers forming here on my raspberry canes. My raspberries per plant, and we've divided these, we've moved them. They're not as vigorous this year. They're not as strong as this year. But in prior years, just one Caroline raspberry is producing a pint of strawberries every single day. I have to come out here every single day and I can harvest a whole bowl of strawberries from one of these plants. And that's a little crazy because now I have six strawberry plants. I just planted one here, another variety there. In fact, there's one over there that's a black raspberry. We have split up the, the Caroline here. So I probably made a mistake in all honesty. And then we have a yellow one here and a yellow one down here that actually didn't make it. But the point is, is that I have a lot of work ahead of me if I'm gonna keep all these strawberry plants. If I'm gonna have these many plants here, you know, I think it's, I think it's probably worth the effort to have things like these fruit trees, the stone fruits, the apples, the pears, you know, I think those are larger fruits. I think the figs are also larger fruits. They don't produce nearly as high a number as something like a raspberry or a strawberry. I think those are the two most time consuming fruits that I grow. So I'm just thinking of different ways and different portions of the season that we just have so much fruit. You know, if we're getting tons of peaches right now, I don't necessarily want something else to coincide with that in high frequency, you know? So I think it's kind of all about really managing, you know, what it is that you're growing and that, and then therefore it's managing your time. So that is kind of what I really wanted to get across to you guys. And there's so many things I could mention in terms of just getting the right soil. You know, we did touch on it, but for the most part, that is honestly the key, is getting yourself off to a great starting point, and that's going to lower the amount of work that you put in. Now, on the weekend, I just wanna mention, I said I spend most of my weekends outside uh, during the growing season. I mean, I don't spend every weekend out here, right? I like to do things as well. Plus, I can only really be out here when it's it's daylight. By the time it gets to about, you know, six or seven o'clock, the mosquitoes start to come out here and it gets very difficult to work as well. So, you know, I would say all in all on the weekend, I probably spend, on a weekend that I work hard, I probably spend about 10 hours out here. And that is really me not always just working, but me enjoying what it is that I'm doing out here. Me filming, me just sitting out here at the patio table, you know, me uh, eating different things. You know, it's not all, all work, but I spent about 50, I spent about 10 hours out here on the weekends. Um, and that's on a weekend that I'm dedicated to doing all this work. Now, if I'm out here, let's say, <clears throat> on a weekend I have just a lot to do, I may only be out here for an hour. You know, I also go on vacation sometimes and I'm not out here. So no one's taking care of this stuff. How does it take care of itself if I'm not here? Well, that's mother nature for you guys. You got yourself a timer. You got yourself off to the right start. You got the right soil. You got some wood chips. You got some mulch. You fed these things already. You don't have to really take care of it. These things will take care of themselves. So. Um, hopefully this really opened your eyes to what it is that really entails in this. I don't personally think you're going to, you're going to have a situation for sure where you're going to have to 
spend a lot of time out here. You're gonna have a situation where things are gonna happen and you're gonna be like, oh wow, that's a lot, I'm overwhelmed. But in reality, you don't, you know, those are the things that are gonna make you better at this. Every time you mess up, every time you have a, a nice little thing of you just running into an issue, you're gonna learn from that, you're gonna become better at this and it's gonna become easier. You're gonna have an easier time and it's not gonna be nearly as much work. You know, I know exactly what it is I have to do with these figs from day one to day, you know, 365 or whatever that is. So, you know, I think, again, you're just gonna have to learn through this and evolve with this and um, I think that's kind of the last point I wanna leave you guys on for this video. So if you enjoyed this one, I do want to thank you guys for watching this. this is, I really, really do appreciate it. If you found this one helpful, please subscribe. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Share the video with somebody you think would be interested in doing something like this, growing food at any capacity. Show them this video and tell them, you know, this is exactly what this guy spends and how much time he spends out here in his garden and his orchard. So um, with that, I'm going to leave you guys. We'll catch you all for tomorrow's video. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you soon.